welcome to another episode of Cafe de Rene. I'm your host, James Simpson, joined once again by the star of the show, Mr. Rene Dupree. Rene, bonjour. Bonjour, bonjour tout le monde. Uh, I'm and... joined by the one and only superstar in the making from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Introduce yourself, my friend. Crude oil, Cody Mack, the blue collar brawler. That's right. He's, he's uh, Seth Rollins' stunt double. <laughs> <laughs> And coming from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, you've already got an advantage over 99% of wrestlers out there. <laughs> yeah, uh, some people tell me that. Well, he's, water, from, man. he's from England, so I mean, they, they literally have a statue of Brett in all the living rooms that they pray to every morning before they go to work. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, well, I mean, we'll talk about the Owen Hart thing, but I've always said it, like, uh, Canadian and British wrestling fans, we've always had this connection with the Hearts, the Bulldogs, Dynamite and such. And, right. I've, I, like, and like a lot of the Canadian podcasters I speak to, uh, Joe Fo and the Ring and Counted Out, shout outs. Uh, like, um, I don't know what it is, there's always been that connection, I don't know if it's a Commonwealth thing, but I think it is no, mainly due to the Hearts and the Bulldogs. It's because Canadians are still under the British rule. We got your queen on our coins in the back of all of our coins, dude. So we're yeah. like intertwined for life. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, great. So last night, he's uh, put on a hell of a, show, hell of a show last night. So uh, tell them about it. Oh, well, we were in Edmonton and it was jam packed to the rafters. I mean, they were hanging. I mean, it was sold out, standing room only. You know, we had a five star classic. That's how it always goes. <laughs> I mean, every night. That's yeah. how we do. Yeah. Uh, no, it was good. We got we got back a little late, around two in the morning. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Was I was trying to work out the times because you're messaging me, and I'm trying to work out the time zone differences. I thought, what the hell is the time over there? Well, Canada is the second largest country in in the world, James. Yeah. So where I'm from is literally a, it would take probably seven hours direct to get there you know so i'm three hours ahead of calgary time yeah right right so that's why in each province it's like goes by an hour so like if i'm in new brunswick then if i go to quebec it's one hour less than one hour less then we get cal bc is like four hours less yeah yeah uh, so yeah it's crazy you know i mean i should be used to it by now especially you know with the amount of people i speak to abroad and that but I can never get me wrapped around it like uh, one specific country having different time zones, like different continents and different countries. I understand, but when it's the same country, it still warps my mind, especially America, right. like East Coast, West Coast, and that. That's just bizarre. <laughs> yeah, it's essentially the same thing because, you know, we're stuck to them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're bigger. We fan out a lot more at the top. So, yeah. Yeah. We got a whole lot of room here, man. Oh, yeah. A whole lot of inhabited <laughs> space. Yeah. Yep. Well, you sent me a clip of an interesting spot you had last night. Um, tell us about it. <laughs> well, well, Cody here. Okay, and I just want to say there was no alcohol and no drugs involved in this. It's just something that happens to wrestlers. Sometimes we miss time our meals and we eat too much. And for all the young wrestlers out there, you have to be you eat light before you go into the ring because this could happen to you. Play the clip. So here we are. This is Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Boom. Oh, sliced bread. Sliced bread. Okay. So right there, what is going on right here? What's oh, going on in your mind God. when the first the first spew of puke? Oh, no. Well, 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 let's go back for a sec here. Okay. So the thing is, the spot just before this, so I'd speared the guy in the white, and then I would went to the girl in the black here, and I was about to give her my finishing move, and the spot was her to counter it, and then, you know, give me a pop me with a forearm. And then she's going to hook me for uh, sliced bread. And as you can see in the clip here, she's going to do sliced bread off the big guy in the red camo. So the yeah. thing is, is as I'm going to her to pick her for the jackhammer, like I can start feeling it come up. But I'm so like, okay. Up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, and then I'm like, okay, no, I managed to keep it down. And then as soon as I lift her up and go over, I'm like, oh, here it comes. So. If you can believe it, as she's got me in sliced bread, there's a bunch of puke in my mouth. I take the back bump. Boom! Oh, right, oh, right there. Boom! Right there. Here comes my tin horn. No coffee. turkey. It's coffee for you. Take out. Okay, so so now hold on, pause it, pause it. You are lying in your vomit. How is that making you feel? It is making me feel 
like subhuman. <laughs> so from an embarrassment <laughs> level, one to ten, where would you rank yourself at this at point? This point, this point here. This point, I'd say this is an eight. An eight. Okay. This keep, this but, here is an eight. But wait, folks, there's more. But wait, there's more. Oh, keep my. going. All of a sudden, so here, now she's oh, going. Whoa! Oh, power. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna puke! 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 Whoa! Damn. Dang. That took an 8 to a 9.5. So no. you can see her standing there no. like, fuck me, what the hell am I gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> I got a bump. Oh, Ralph. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah. Pause it, pause it, pause it. You see it on her face. Yeah. She's like, yeah. what have I gotten myself into? I have to, oh god. Yeah, she's probably wondering, should I bump him in his own puke or what? But then that means she'd probably have to bump him. Yeah. This is the autumn. So this is 9.5 to a 10. I'm getting not finish well i mean you have uh, uh intestinal fortitude well, that's it and so. since your intestines literally came out of your mouth there that's that's good <laughs> yeah so let that <laughs> that no matter what crude oil cody mac even if he's puking in the ring doesn't quit that's right that's how hard quit. i work see that's old school baby that's the way calgarians do it up here that's right it's pretty dangerous okay the ring but you pretty dangerous for the ring when you think about it in case someone wants to pick someone up for a body slam then all of a sudden whoop yeah, yeah. it's also really fucking gross it's gross so. <laughs> yeah they took, uh, they took a 15 minute break after this match to clean it up and they actually did a pretty decent job so obviously yeah. i had to go upstairs and uh you know have a dog whipping session with some of the boys including the guy in the white he's considered you know kind of one of the locker room leaders if we like mm -hmm. to use that term anymore well it's okay, because now you're going to be on the cafe, and hopefully uh, James can contact Matthew from Botchamania. There you go. And say, hey, we got something here for you. With the commentary, too. Hell yeah. So we can give him some exposure. So, you know, you take a negative, you turn into a positive, and boom. Hey, Cody, I'm firing that up on TikTok later on. Thank there you. We go. Thank you, bro. There we go. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. So uh, we spoke about last week then, uh, Renee, um, the Dark Side of the Ring, the Plane Ride from Hell episode. And uh, one of the things we spoke about was if Ric Flair responded. And we mentioned that he was going to be going on the uh, podcast oral sessions. Uh, that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> well, he probably, yeah, he probably got some sanity and realized yeah. that was a bad idea. Yeah. But he has uh, responded on uh, Twitter, of all places, uh, which everyone does. And uh, so I'll, uh, I've took some uh, transcripts of uh, what he's wrote. Said, um, Every person that I've worked with has said not to post a response. But I've never run from the past behaviours before, and I'm not going to start now. I want to clarify a few things. After four years, sorry, about four years ago, I gave ESPN full access to my life 30 for 30 special. They covered taxes, financial issues, adultery, divorces, the passing of my child, and drinking slash partying at length. Rory Camp, desperate to matter for another 15 minutes, did an interview about it this morning. When Rory's lips are moving, he's typically lying. But one part of what he said was the God's honest truth. I'd never heard fact he had forced someone to touch his genitals cap admitted everything with rick that was construed as negative i tried to address in 30 for 30. his drinking his philandering his adultery his money problems there's quite a bit but never at least in the people that i've spoke to no one has ever brought up that he would force himself onto somebody I allowed my personal life and the lives of my wife and children to be turned upside down for one reason, whether it's good or bad, even the really bad. The truth has to matter, even in wrestling. My issues have been well documented for over 40 plus years career. The impact of drinking too much, which has nearly killed me five years ago, has been told time and time again. Okay, so wait, let's cut it kind of there. You know, but bottom line is he should have gone to rehab years ago and yeah. try to, you know, 
And sometimes in this business, there's an old saying in rehab, people, places, and things. Sometimes the thing you love the most is what's causing your addiction and killing you. So maybe he should have took a different path in life and stayed away from the wrestling business. You know what yeah. I mean? Sounds yeah. crazy to say, but because it's him, right? And he's yeah. one of the legends, right? But yeah, yeah, that's that. Other than that, uh, I don't know. I thought this thing was uh, was settled. I thought they they had a uh, she got paid out and everything is okay. So why you know why is it getting brought up again? It's today's culture, Renee, cancel culture. Um, one little. Th- I mean, like I said, like we said, we don't know if he did or if he didn't, like, try to, you know, uh, get this woman to touch his genitals or, his, you know, like, basically, we uh, don't know. I also heard, didn't he call out uh, Rob Van Dam? I think he, yeah, uh, no, I think Rob Van Dam defended him. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, because RVD, and you know yourself, RVD's one of the good guys. Um, RVD has been, de- uh, you know, he said that they've done a lot of <laughs> editing. And he already said, I, um, I've never, I didn't see Flair do these things on the plane. I can only tell you what I saw. And I think uh, Rick actually thanked him. Oh, okay. O- o- unless something else has happened in the meantime. But from what I saw, that's what I saw what was posted. Okay. Okay. But uh, are we going to go into the Chris Canyon stuff now? Yes. Yeah, so uh, we'll go into this week's Dark Side, uh, the Chris Canyon episode. So, uh, Controversial episode for a few reasons. I mean, the one guy who came out as a saint and a really nice guy was Father James Mitchell. Where um, he put with a lot of shit with Canyon, like helping him through uh, things. You didn't get to see the show, but I oh, got yeah. to see it. Wow, that was heavy. Because believe it or not, my first uh, like dark match before television, no, yeah, was with, was with Canyon. Oh right. Oh. Uh, because we were in OVW, and anytime WWF would come in, like in the proximity, like at the Kentucky or Ohio, we would drive up to the shows, right? So it was Raw in Cincinnati and SmackDown in Columbus, Ohio. So we got to the Cincinnati, and uh, originally I was supposed to be wrestling, but then, you know, time restraints or whatever. And then as I'm walking backstage, Pat Patterson's like, Are you coming to Columbus tomorrow? I'm like, Yep, you're going to work. So, and they put me with Canyon. And the reason why, and I know Pat had a lot to do with it, because there's certain guys who are in that position where they wrestle the the younger guys in the dark matches, they will purposely fuck up matches. Mm. You know what I mean? I've heard that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They will do things to to make you look bad, and you know, just to bury you. It's a doggy dog cutthroat world, especially up there. Uh, spot plug, uh, spot plug, uh, pay right. that when they try to fuck Brock up. <laughs> but uh, uh, Pat made sure that he put me with Canyon. The reason why, because Canyon was a pro. Oh, yeah. He was a professional. He could have, you know, and he was very giving and very uh, willing to teach. You know what I mean? Not so much in the ring. Well, in the ring, definitely, but outside, because, you know, 85% is backstage, how to conduct yourself, what to do, never go off script, and all this other shit, you know what I mean? He was very, very passionate for the wrestling business, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, I mean, obviously, he was a closeted homosexual for many years till after WWE, and, but it seemed like, I don't know if that contributed towards these uh, bipolar, because you could tell, like, and when... Uh, James Mitchell was telling the stories. You could tell mentally he was unhealthy for a long time. I don't know how much of that was because, you know, he kept being gay, hidden from everyone. Uh, I would imagine that contributed towards it. And we saw he's running WCW, had a good run, had a fun feud with uh, DDP. Him and DDP were good friends. DDP was on the show. And uh, I suppose that one of the couple of talk points that did come out was uh, obviously the spot, which ironically me and you spoke about off camera last week. Uh, when he came out of the box, very subtle, by the way, uh, against uh, the Undertaker, and the Undertaker proceeded to basically kill him. Yeah, did you see that chair shot he took? Uh, no. You don't remember that? This oh, was, was that their their WCW he, tag no, team no, match? No, 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 no. It was when on SmackDown they had Kane come out of a box singing, Boy George, do you really want to hurt me? Because I think they got wind that he was a homosexual. Oh, that's, that's so what I mentioned. Come yeah. Out. yeah. And yeah. then fucking Taker just blasted. That yeah. was probably one of the worst chair shots I've ever seen ever. 
It yeah. wasn't just a one shot. It was just over and over and over. I was like, yeah, Jesus. I remember now. Well, yeah. yeah, that was pretty brutal, man. So, yeah. and, here's the uh, thing. one thing I noticed when I got there is like at that time, uh, the veterans of the locker room, Undertaker being one of them, would want to see if you were a stooge for the dirt sheets. Yeah. You understand? Now, I'm not saying that Canyon was or whatever, but that was like major, major heat because that was a big problem back in those days of guys who would leak shit out to the, to the, you know what I mean, to the, to the, the dirt sheets. And I mean, remember I told you where sometimes in the ring stuff got real, yep. right? Well, that was obviously a case of it. Now, I don't know why, maybe, you know, Maybe he had heat with the office. Maybe he said something. You know what I mean? It could be as simple as, you know, you forgot to say hi to somebody and that pisses off the wrong people. You know what I mean? And before, just instead of just releasing you, okay, we're going to like kill this guy <laughs> physically and then we'll release him. You know what I mean? Oh, to be, to be honest, it, as tough as it sounds, it might have been simple as fact he was a WCW guy. I mean, how many WCW guys got over in WWE? Booker T. That's pretty much it. Pretty much it. After that invasion, they I mean, they even destroyed DDP, when you think about it. DDP was like rock level of popularity, you know, in them late 90s. Uh, so it might have been a simple case of that. We don't know, but uh, it's probably, but, you know, we can't make accusations because I don't really want to get sued. But right. it could be because because he was gay. It could be because he was, you know, stooge into the dirt sheets. It could be because he was a WCW guy. We don't know, but we can only say what we've been presented with. Uh one of the things that did come up though, and it's a it's a common trait we see cancel culture. Have you heard about they're trying to cancel John Cena? Yeah, have you heard about that? I have, I have. <sighs> For having yeah, opinions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like he he didn't think that Canyon was that good of a wrestler. I believe is what he said, right? Mm. Yeah, I not um, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I have sent the clip over. What about the accusations that the uh, wrestler made I the think other this day was, here on looks our like show? This was about two thousand six, uh, two thousand five. Gay man. Yeah. Uh, gay wrestler. Yeah. Uh, what's what was the, his name? I don't know. The guy's name is uh, Chris. Chris Canyon. Absolutely. Yeah. You know Chris? You know I know Chris right. from a long time. Chris. Ago. Chris said some things about Vince, <coughs> which uh, you know Vince wasn't here to defend himself. I tried to get him on the phone, but he says Vince is a homophobe, and Chris claims that he was fired because he is a gay man. Here's here's a weird thing about Chris, and I've known Chris for a long time. He okay. uh, he actually came out of the closet after he was fired. Right. He just he wasn't any good. He was not a good wrestler? No, it's, uh, he was hired by WCW initially for like a demon persona called Mortis, which was pretty entertaining. He had the whole mask and everything. Okay, pause. He came to us. Um, no, he, he, he was talented. Was he a, a, a WrestleMania main eventer? Possibly not, but then again, how many people really are, right? Yeah. You know? Uh, did he deserve or was he good enough and talented enough to have some type of position in the wrestling business, especially now, like with their PC in Florida and all that stuff? A hundred, a hundred percent. Like that yeah. not only is very, very creative, he was very uh, innovative. And as far as my dealings with him, he was a professional. You know, mm-hmm. He wasn't one of these hard asses trying to, Trying to look to find something to bury you about, you know, he was and he loved the business, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but as far as saying he's not he, not talented, <clears throat> no, no, I, I disagree with you there, Jonathan. Yeah, I disagree as well. Uh, yeah, I think simply yeah. because he was the guy that was the stunt double for Buddy and ready to rumble, they could have chose anybody and they chose him as the stunt double. I mean, mind you, he was already kind of matching the look a bit. But they could have still mm-hmm. done anybody up in makeup. They could have chosen anybody. They could have hired outside of wrestling, but they chose Chris Canyon to be the stunt double uh, for Jimmy the King. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. John's uh, opinions were wrong because Canyon was talented, but to get him cancelled just because that was his opinion, that's no. just, you know, that's just overboard. I mean, I could say. I don't know. Kenny Omega is not the best wrestler in the world. Okay, that's my opinion. The people disagrees with it, but I'm not expecting people to cancel me because I said he's not that good. Uh, for example. Well, here's the thing: Chris hadn't committed suicide 
at this I point. Suppose. Right? right? Well, so I'm, yeah. Now, if you were to say post mortem. Oh, yeah, that's different. That's like, kind yeah. of the sense, right? Yeah. But, it's uh, but I mean, it's cancel culture. They're trying to get every so some of some of them can be valid. Obviously, we we saw the speaking out movement last year, for example. Um, you know, with the female wrestlers who got abused by the train stuff, things like that. Yeah, you cancel these people. What's been doing these horrific things? But to cancel John Cena for an interview he done, it looked like it was in two thousand five, two thousand six. It looked like to me. Yeah. Um, years ago. Yeah. You know, this is at least five, three or you know, four or five years before. Canyon unfortunately committed suicide. Here's the thing too, well, like gone mad. we weren't aware that Chris had severe mental health issues. Well, right? yeah, I wasn't aware of it. Mm. Right? I don't think anybody else was. No. You know what I mean? And it's not as <clears throat> it's not as accepted and and uh, um, as sensitive as it is today. You know yeah. what I mean? Back then it was like ah, he's a little nutty. You know what I mean? That's that's what you would say, right? But now yeah. we understand. Um, I have OCD. I think you have it too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, and it's just funny because it's just an opinion. John Cena just had an opinion, especially about a guy who was alive. And opinions don't sexually assault people. Opinions don't, mm-hmm. you know, like it's just an opinion. And and for people to say cancel John Cena, who look at all the work he's done since then, yeah. just for having an opinion of somebody because he believes he is the best person, and he's going to obviously say everyone else's not a good wrestler this because he believes he's the best especially at that time when he was the top guy and under all sorts of the spotlight um but yeah, I was better than him, well there you go right there you go there you go what else we got so uh yeah funny enough uh speaking of kenny omega uh so uh, aw had the big show this past wednesday uh basically it was a paper pay-per-view quality uh card but it was main evented by no sorry it was the, the first match of the show actually yeah uh, which was weird uh, Kenny Omega, who is the current world champion, he was in an untitled match against the uh, debut and Brian Danielson. Uh, good match. I uh, I don't know if you just got around to watching it. Yeah, we did. Oh yeah, we sat and watched oh, yeah. it. That was yeah, magnifique. Yeah, you know that style, the the pacing, the psychology, everything was a one. Yeah. And, but you said it's weird that they started off the show now. No. No, it's not because that's where you know you start off. Bring the people up. It's like a rock yeah. star, rock show. Yeah, you know what I mean. I suppose, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think I, I, the reason I'm probably wrong uh, is just because them type of quality matches, like you just presume they're a main event. You know what I mean? But it looks like they'll probably do the return match uh, maybe for the title down the road. Uh, what do you reckon to the finish it being a thirty minute draw? When's the last time you seen that? Exactly, it's been a exactly. while. Brilliant story yeah, exactly. Storytelling. You know, people <laughs> haven't seen it, so it, it, and what does that do as, as a consumer or as a fan? It leaves you wanting more. Yeah. So the next time they do have their match, it's like, oh shit, here we go. Yeah. Yo. And they done a good rating. Uh, I think it was one point two slash one point three. So good rating uh, for AEW. So uh, we've. Said this many times in the last few weeks, uh, Renee. The momentum is behind it. AW, they're basically like the baby faces of wrestling, especially when you compare them to WWE and like <laughs> everything that seems to come out from WWE lately. <laughs> Evil Empire, Evil yeah. Empire, and another baby face move. And I mean, we'll we'll go in depth about this. I don't know how to feel about it. So, AW's partnered up with the uh, Owen Hart Foundation um, to honor Owen Hart with a tournament and for him to be on merchandise uh i have got some uh quotes from uh, aw itself all elite wrestling and owen hart foundation a non-profit charity blah 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 blah, blah um are collaborating to honor the legacy of the late wrestler owen hart a beloved figure in professional wrestling community and beyond this collaboration includes launching the annual owen hart cup tournament within aw which will see the winner receive a cup known as for Owen, as well as the production and distribution of unique and original Owen Hart merchandise, including specific retail goods. I've got to get my hands on that stuff. And uh, as well as their uh, upcoming AW console video game. So 
this is probably going to be his first appearance in like a video game since Legends of Wrestling 3, uh, which was nothing to do with WWE. Uh, but yeah, the Alliance incorporates uh, opportunities to develop Owen Hart action figures, uh, posters, apparel, additional merchandise, and uh, yeah, and just some giveaways. Um, so yep, yeah, uh, thoughts on this, uh, lads? Oh, obviously, Martha wants nothing to do with WWE at all. Mm. Understandable. And, and yeah, so I don't think she's soured on the because Owen loved wrestling. I think yes. Owen grew up in wrestling. Or you know, the hearts, that's their life, right? Mm. I guess she just has a bitter taste in her mouth and understandably against the WWE. So I mean, it's cool because Owen was. Oh, it was fucking really good. You know? oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody. It's, uh, likes it. So uh, it's good they have his legacy shown somehow, like with this company, and that's going to help them even more too. So uh, even in in death, his memory mm-hmm. is going to help build a different promotion in the wrestling business. You know, yeah. it's kind of cool. Yeah, it seems uh, Chris Jericho's got had a big hand in doing putting this together, and. Uh, we mentioned uh, last week that um, Chris Jericho, apparently behind the scenes, has got a hand in the uh, dark side of the ring. Does he really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and obviously, dark side of the ring, uh, one of the episodes they've done, uh, I don't know if it was this season or last season, I think it was last season, uh, with Owen Hart. It lines up right because apparently they've been in talks about a year and a half. And uh, Chris Jericho has opened up about it. Um, so, speaking to Stephanie Chase, uh, Chris Jericho details his involvement in bringing Owen's widow Martha and the AEW president uh, Tony Khan together. And here's his quote: "It was a pad- uh, sorry, it was a passion project for me, and obviously for Martha and Tony. We worked on it for a long time, about a year and a half, to put the deal together and figure out what we wanted to do. I just knew I wanted Owen's legacy to be something positive and something great as far as wrestling goes, rather than just be drilling on his death." That's true. That's the main reason why we all wanted this to happen, so we can celebrate Owen's career and the contributions that he has made. He was a pioneer. And uh, he also mentioned what is Owen's connection to AEW, some people are saying. Well, one of the connections is that he's specifically the reason I got into wrestling. Owen Hart was the guy. To an extent, Shawn Michaels and Ricky Steamboat. But Owen Hart, to me, I thought I want to be like that guy. This is your connection to AEW. The original AEW face of the company is an Owen Hart fanatic and disciple. That's the reason we wanted to do this. We'll do the Owen Hart Cup and tournament and make people feel good about Owen rather than sad. We know what happened, but that was over 20 years ago. Let's move forward, remembering his amazing contributions and legacy in the ring and still resonate to this day. I'm really excited about it. I'm very happy about it. I'm really happy the deal got done. We put a lot of work into this to make it happen, but it, it did, and now we can move forward and have great times with Owen and Flo, which I'm sure, I'm sure he would love as well. Yeah, that's great. Looking forward to. I actually, man, now with the matches they got and the momentum they got, the momentum and the cool mm-hmm. stuff they're doing, you know what I mean? It's, it's making me. Turn into a wrestling fan. That's weird. I'm turning into a wrestling fan. <laughs> Fancy that. Fancy that. Holy. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, it's good as well because the the younger generation of wrestlers who maybe, you know, aren't aware of who Owen Hart is, this will bring some more exposure and, you know, get some more eyes on a wrestler who was way ahead of his time. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, great things. And uh, like we mentioned, they've got all the momentum. They're the baby faces. Uh, I can imagine this is a kick in the teeth for WWE because they've been trying to do this for years, but Martha, understandably, didn't want anything to do with WWE. Um, funny enough, I remember during Mark Henry's uh, Hall of Fame speech, he actually brought up Owen and he, and he actually said, you know, Martha, it's time to uh, bring uh, Owen back into wrestling. It's his children's birthright. And it didn't happen in WWE, but Mark Henry's with AEW now and he made it happen. <laughs> Now you know why they're the babyface wrestling company. Exactly. So, uh, but it's good news and it's great to see because we all love Owen Hart, don't we? Uh, so it's great now we can celebrate him and, you know, think of the good times instead of like thinking, you know, about the tragedy, what happened. So 
it's a good thing and I'm excited for it and uh yeah and get to be able to play uh Owen Hart and upcoming video game uh, I'm excited for that as well <laughs> yeah cool so and uh as for WWE the uh, evil empire um <laughs> not much has been happening NXT uh Bron Breaker Rick Steiner's kid was in the main event he tagged with the NXT champion and uh he got the pinfall win so uh I keep saying every week I'm just excited about this young guy and can't wait to see what happens uh nothing really happened on well raw and smackdown roman reigns on both shows uh won both things uh tonight extreme rules big e's the wwe champion you, you, he, he knew he he knows he's up to date but i don't <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah he's excited well, for it i had no idea there was a pay-per-view uh, yeah. not a lot of people do to be fair yeah. uh what, he's gonna well, be there with his, his wwe hat and his his, his can and popcorn, yeah. and he's gonna go, yeah. you know, go oh, Roman, yeah, exactly. <laughs> t shirts, well, wrapping belts, all that stuff. Well, I don't think the WWE champion Big E knew about it as well because he's not on the show. What, yeah, the champion of the company is not on the show. They just put the belt on him, too, right? Exactly. He's not on the show. What did I say to you last week, Renee? I hope I'm wrong. I hope they push him serious in that. And the first pay per view, he's not on the show. <sighs> no, I. Gee, they can't. No, there's there's got to be something. There's 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 something going to happen. Oh, you know, they'll they have a storyline in place, but still, like you know, you pay. Yeah, he's going to have to make an appearance, but you know. Oh yeah, he has to make an appearance, but right. yeah, he'll the be there. Some, I don't know. Uh, well, sometimes it sounds better to not be on the show at all than to be built up like Finn Balor, which it's like, is he like, is he still wrestling in a match? Like you don't even know because all they talk about is Roman and Brock now. Seems yeah. like the word oversaturation comes to mind, right? Oversaturation yeah. wrestlers because they had so many and, and TV time because there's so much wrestling that how can you keep up with it unless you're like completely OCD? Uh, <laughs> I, I, right? I, honest, I, I catch the highlights on YouTube, but I ain't got the time to watch Raw SmackDown right. for two or three hours anymore. Uh, yeah. But uh, Finn Balor is in the main event. He's against Roman for the Universe title. Well, he's the demon, so he's got his face paint out, so now he's serious. Um, But unfortunately, uh, Crown Jewel is coming up in a couple of weeks, and the main event advertises Roman Reigns for Brock Lesnar. Now, they haven't specifically said it's for the title, but come on, (laughs) it's for the title. (laughs) So they've already spoiled the finish of tonight's show. (laughs) Yeah, it's. Is it time for WrestleMania? <laughs> we got Q and A's, <laughs> but uh, oh, so we'll go to next uh, Q and A's. Uh, new fan of the show, uh, Renee, uh, happy page, and uh, she said she was a big fan and what she wanted to know. Um, she wants to know what was it like being part of uh, one of the most hated WWE tag teams, and she also says thank you. You was one of her childhood favorites. Oh, all right. You won't insult me, Cash. Uh, no, I'm joking. Um, what? Uh, it was good. It was good. We made, uh, we had a lot of fun. That was almost 20 years ago, so a lot of that I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And a uh, couple of questions from Demo God. Uh, first question. You mentioned in the previous episode you won't watch anything with Paul Heyman. Why is that? I think I, I answered that question. I know the guy personally. Next question. <laughs> and uh, fun question here. Uh, was there any creative ideas from the writers for you that we didn't see on TV? Uh, well, there, uh, there was plans to put ECW tag title. They were going to make a tag title just for me and Sylvan. That's right, yeah. Yeah, which people didn't get to see. And uh, I screwed that one up. Was there any uh, gimmick ideas or character ideas besides that? No, everything that I did, I basically, I didn't even ask permission. Yeah. I just did it. Like when I grew that funky mustache with the robe. That's right, I, yeah. I didn't ask shit. I just did the <laughs> robes, the, the hair. I didn't know. I was like, you know what? I'm an independent contractor. It's up to me to get over, so I'm gonna try different things, you know. Especially at that young age, because you remember, don't forget my age, right? You're still de- learning who you are as a per, not only a wrestler, but as a person in life. You still haven't discovered who you really are, right? Yeah. So. Cool. That's what. 
Right, so your favourite part of the show then, uh, Wrestlemania. Mania. Wrestlemania! <laughs> cool. So, uh, look at us up. So yeah, first uh, meme we see, and... Uh... Not sure if Jake the Snake Roberts is doing rest of or if the DDT magically stopped hurting in the late 19th. Oh, I agree 110%. Yeah. <laughs> Jake the only one that probably knows how to execute it, because now... How many DDTs do you see on a show? I know. Right? Yeah. And I remember that used to be like almost like spike pile driver status. It was. Yeah. The DDT, man. So. Well, this guy, you're, you're how old? I'm 33. He's 33, so I got a few. I got almost five years on you, so. Oh, I'm the baby yeah. here then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 22 baby. years young. <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. What's next? Momo. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one that's brilliant that's a good Got a one got a little warrior toilet paper and eight people in 1889 ah you avoided that. taking that spot didn't you Renee? if i avoided yeah did you come in just after every case you finished his run yeah 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 he was gone like because I think we did the Royal Rumble together. That's right, yeah. Rikishi, and then uh, he was gone shortly after. Yeah. That's right. You dodged yeah. a bullet. <laughs> yeah. What would you have done had they present that to you? <laughs> the word no, the word no does not exist there. Yeah. If they say something, you got to do it, no matter what. You know, unless you're super high up in the food chain, but even them. Mm-hmm. The reason why they're super high up in the food chain is because they never said no to anything. Get it? Yeah, that's true. Uh, cool. Next one. When you pour a bowl of cereal and they find out your milk. Oh, <laughs> that is heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I've seen pictures of Curry. He looks better now than in that picture. There he looks all bloated. Now he looks like super ripped. And oh, yeah. He's in great shape at the minute. Right? Yeah. Yeah. When... <laughs> oh wow oh god that's a good one i i forgot the guy's name who um he the previous uh listener uh gerald and fans alfonso i think he's called uh thank you for your memes this week yeah, uh, we enjoyed you. them <laughs> cool so wrestling tiktok so the first one that uh, lex Luger showing off Oh, here we go. Oh, is this when they had the trial run? For, uh, okay, no. Is they put, here we go, Lex. There we go. <laughs> you think anybody wants a roundhouse kick to the face while I'm wearing these bad boys? I love I'm that movie, by the way. Lex Quando. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like a roundhouse yeah. kick to the face when I'm wearing yeah. a pair of these. I love that movie. This was like, no, this ain't the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really good. Oh, shit, grab my head. The other hand. My other hand. All right, now watch this. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this one's hilarious. Well, he had good execution, right? Just the landing got him. Just, yeah. He wasn't aligned with the. Wow! See how, yeah. see how close his yeah. head came? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. snapped his neck. Oh, yeah. And now, I live here. Jungle Boy. In the grips of Adam Cole, the Young Bucks. Look at this. Okay. This dude sprints. Is there a five count? That rule really out. That oh, is great. Is this guy? Yeah, I'm not a fan of the books at all. <laughs> Bad clip and stuff. And he's doing the Macho Man. Okay. Yeah. Macho is rolling in his grave. And next we got uh, Stone Code. I love this one. How you doing, son? What's your name? David. What do you do for a living, David? Drive a truck. 
You drive a truck, do you? If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a sorry-ass truck driver. Just today, I was on my way out here to this here building, and a truck driver must have been driving too long without no sleep, drinking too much beer, and a sunbitch ran me off the road. Now, there's one thing I can't stand, David, as a truck driver. I got a good mind to grab you by that there shirt, pull you over my barricade here, and beat the living snot out of you right here in front of you. You think that's funny? What's your name, ma'am? Stacy. Oh, Stacy. What do you do for a living, Stacy? I work for a Christian publishing company. If there's one thing I can't stand. <laughs> 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 we can't we can't finish that one off, could we? <laughs> All right. Jesus. Um, another treat for you, Renee, from the Pro Wrestling Nowhere TikTok account. Everyone, go and follow it and subscribe to it. Uh, clip of you. What? Another one? Have I sent it? Sign up today. Boom. Yeah. Enjoy. Is that with Nakajima again? Uh, I think so, yeah. I think so much. Uh, I got good chemistry with that guy. He's That whole roster is talented, man. You guys, seriously, WrestleUniverse.com, sign up, bro. Just watch the stuff. It's amazing. Did you catch the show last night? Uh, I was Muta. wrestling. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Muta, main event. 30-minute uh, draw, funny enough. <laughs> Muta? Uh, yeah, I forgot a uh, young guy he was wrestling. Uh, I apologize for me pronunciation, but a uh, young guy, um, Japanese guy. I forgot his Michael, name now. But Kitomiya? No. Poss- I think so. Apparently in the block, he's won two and drew one of his matches. Okay. So, uh, uh, But yeah, but great match. I uh, forgot the guy's name, but he wrestled Muta. But yeah, 30-minute uh, draw. I know, and Muta's almost 60. Wow. Oh, really? you know, <laughs> you know, they say like people love wrestling and are the wrestling business you know flair different guys have that title no no man it's fucking muda that guy i've been around him consistently for 14 years i've never met anyone who loves the business more than him oh wow. yeah he loves it did he you, is wrestling. did you ever watch his match with hogan 93 yeah is that the one where he pulls out the the Hogan's like, doing drop ho hos and degrees and everything. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> much. Can't lose face for the Japanese fans. He has to pull out some wrestling because you're wrestling Muda. You know? Yeah. yeah. Guy's agile like a cat. You know, Muda's a big guy, man. Yeah, He's like 6'3. Yeah. 6'3. Yeah. 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 I mean, that size to be able to be agile as he was, I mean, mm-hmm. he had hops, bro. Fucking oh, yeah. unreal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, what else we got? Uh, I think that's the last one. That's yeah. it, eh? Yeah, okay. that's the last one, yeah. So, yeah, so that's the end of the show. So, thanks, uh, Renee. Thanks, Cody. Uh, great having you on the show. And, yeah, if you're more than happy, I'd love to have you back on. But before we do go, uh, tell everyone where they can find you, Cody, on social media. Uh, so, you can find me on Instagram, crude oil underscore Cody Mac. You can find me on Facebook, Cody Mac. And you can find me on Twitter as well, crude oil Cody Mac. Awesome. Uh, Renee? You can find me... At the sushi bar on Main Street, <laughs> Calgary, between the hours of noon and 3 p.m. It's the happy hour buffet. <laughs> That's where you can find me. I can't wait for you to get your ass over here in the UK, man. We're going to hit the town when you get over here. We're going to do Cafe de, Re- Cafe de Rene in an actual cafe. <laughs> yes. Live. Cup, live. Cup of tea, stale toast. We're sorted. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm on a classic English breakfast too, black pudding and all. Oh, oh, I, miss oh I miss those. I miss it. <laughs> cool. Right, and, yeah, and, if, and if everyone wants to uh, follow the channel on social media, you can do. We're on Twitter and Instagram, and we've got the Facebook group, Cafe Day Renee. And yeah, we we're doing well. Everyone, thank you for tuning in there. We're doing some great numbers. If you hit that subscribe button, even better for us. So, yeah, until then, we'll catch you in the next episode. <laughs>